Welcome to the Emporium Outdoors, my name is Michael and this is the first in a five part series on a beginner's guide to ATV camping. So this is our starting canvas, I went out and purchased a second hand ATV that's in reasonable condition. This is a Kawasaki KVF360 or in the US I believe it's called a Prairie. It's got 1750 kilometers and is in good condition. It has four wheel drive, a locked rear differential, has an open differential in the front that you can also lock with a lever. So the first thing I'm going to do is give it a very good wash so I can do a thorough inspection. You should try and do this every ride as well and remove as much dirt and grime as you can to stop it accumulating in places that you don't want it to. Keeping your ATV clean will make maintenance much easier and will extend the life of some of the components. I'm going to go ahead and take off the front cowling around the fuel tank so I can have a look for any fuel leaks or any mud that's built up up inside there because it's one of the difficult places to get to. While I'm at it, I'm also going to inspect the air filter and make sure the air box is nice and clean. When you're buying an ATV or UTV, having a quick look at the air filter condition will give you a good indication on how the previous owner actually treated his machines. A nice clean air filter is a really good sign. So let's talk a little bit more about this ATV and why I particularly chose this model. First of all, I wanted something that's going to be affordable, so someone coming into the hobby for the first time is not going to break the bank. It's going to leave you some money left for some of the other equipment you might need. One of the things I needed on an ATV was full locking differentials front and rear. That was a must to have. This quad also has a high and low range, it has an electric start, so more importantly it has a pole start as well, which is a great backup, especially if you're camping out in colder weather and you can't always rely on batteries. This quad also had a winch when I bought it, which saves me a job of installing one, and it has nice big racks front and rear. One of the downsides of the KVF360 is it's carbureted. I would prefer an injected model, but at this age and price point, it's probably not likely that I could pick one up for the same money. What a difference one hour's worth of cleaning does on a dirty quad. This is going to make the next jobs much, much easier to do. Next, we're going to jack up the ATV so that we can get to all four wheels off the ground at the same time. What we're looking for is any play in the hubs, which would indicate a loose or damaged bearing. And we're also going to check the steering and make sure it's tight and there's no slop. Next, I'm just going to retorque all the wheel nuts. You'd be surprised how many times you find these loose. For this quick inspection, I'm just going to check the rear differential oil, make sure it's filled to the top, and also that it looks clean and healthy. I plan to change all the fluids in the near future, so that'll be the front and rear differential, as well as the engine oil. But for now, I'm just going to check the levels. So the front differential plug is a little bit hard to get to, but it's not too bad. One of the interesting things about this ATV is it shares the same oil as the engine oil for the front differential. So because this quad has a CVT transmission, we're going to take off the housing and inspect the sheaves as well as the belt. This is opposed to some of the Honda quads which don't have a CVT and just have a straight gearbox. I'd recommend performing this task every four or five rides, or if you've been pretty hard on the quad, then it's a good time to check the belt and clean out any of that dust. The dust can build up inside the casing and it can lead to the belt slipping. So the belt and the sheaves look in good condition. Can't feel any ridges at all, it's nice and smooth. On the primary and the secondary, there's nothing loose. Everything looks nice and tight, you can hear the weights moving. And the inside is pretty clean. <clears throat> now this is the part that does the engine brake in. And there's still material on there, so that's good. So that all looks good. That's one last thing to worry about. So I'm going to put this back together again. And we'll call that inspected. Performing this task on old machines is more important as some of the newer machines have belt saver technology which doesn't allow the engine to slip the belt as much. So on older machines making sure they're in good condition will save you a lot of hassle out on the trails. Now we're ready to actually put some luggage on the ATV so we can carry some camping equipment to go on our adventures. I found this matching set of front and rear bags at Cabela's. They were on sale. I think the front was $100 and the rear was $150. 
I chose this model because it had a nice padded seat which I thought as me my dog would fit on quite well as we ride around. Both front and rear bags attach by a simple buckle system. This should be compatible with the vast majority of ATVs. I did find the straps very long for my machine so I ended up cutting them so they were easier to manage and didn't stick out the sides. The front bag has two access doors with a divider in between so you can have it as two compartments or have one long compartment for longer items. I find that if I fold down just the top half I can put all my longer stuff such as tent poles and my axe. One of the things that also drew me to this particular type of bag was the waterproof covers. This will come in valuable when the winter comes and the snow and ice will be thawing up from the front of the machine. There are also four sets of straps across the front two panels and you can strap things to these. I find them very secure and I use them often to put things there that I need to get to in a hurry. The rear bag consists of three separate compartments, each one with its own access. The two side compartments have drink holders. The bags themselves are soft sided and they're also padded with this orange liner that makes it easy to see inside. The side compartments are slightly larger than the rear one and the lids fold out to the sides. The rear bag also has two tie down straps which are used to secure my poncho. On top of the side lids are some indentations for small items. I find I use this quite often when I'm putting things down that I don't want to roll off and go into the dirt. The rear seat can also be brought forward by disconnecting it from the velcro strip. This can then be connected to the main body of the pack in order to create a kind of pocket box type thing. Or I think that's what it's meant to be used for. As with the front bag, there's also this handy waterproof cover that you can slip over the top and it is fitted so you can still use the seat. There's also molly on the front of the two bags which you can attach other accessories such as flashlights, a leather and maybe a first aid kit or a small pouch that you can just keep things handy. So the ATV is now ready to load up and head out to an adventure. We checked out some of the components for mechanical soundness, checked our fluid levels and we checked our packs are all secured to the machine. And now we're ready to ride. On our next video we're going to be taking our first camping trip with the ATV, see how she rides and whether our system actually works for hauling gear. And until next time, take care. And as always, thank you very much for watching. If you like my videos, leave me a comment, maybe a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe.